This video brought to you by Privacy.com, which allows you to use virtual cards as a buffer to your credit card to control and secure your online payments. Why did I move here? I guess it was the weather. Or the... Ah, I don't know, that thing. That magic. You know how it is. Free Guy is a new Grand Theft Auto film adaptation about Guy, who realizes he's an NPC in GTA Online and starts a revolution for his kind because being an NPC in GTA Online isn't so great. The film received a positive reception and made over 300 million at the box office, which might not sound too special, but in fact is very special, because Free Guy isn't actually a Grand Theft Auto adaptation or any other kind of adaptation. See, in case you hadn't noticed, Hollywood of today kind of runs on franchises and IP with pre-established value. Not only because that's what audiences have been conditioned to enjoy, but also because studio executives operate on understandable insecurity. If you greenlight an expensive movie based on a popular thing and it flops, no worries, because you didn't do anything wrong. Wrong, right? But if you greenlight an expensive movie based on nothing but your own personal vouching for the original material and it flops, bad news pal, you might be out of a job. And put all that together, you get modern Hollywood. Make it original? Why would I do that when I can make a sequel? IPs and sequels. That is the thing that people want. And so the reason Free Guy is so special is because it isn't based on any kind of IP. It's a fully original movie written by an up-and-coming writer who didn't have rights to any other stuff that Hollywood requires to build a big blockbuster hit. Oh, that's, that's not good. And yet, the writer and Free Guy overall still found a way to sort of cheat, or in better words, to play the Hollywood system as if it did. To the point where not only did the movie convince the studio to give it a budget of 100 million, it also convinced enough audiences to show up the theater at a very difficult time to warrant a sequel. And for an unknown project that could have been created by you and me, that is astounding. So today, what I thought would be interesting and useful to do is to look deeper into Free Guy and how exactly it positioned itself as a successful blockbuster without actually having any right or rights to be one, and how the rest of us can try to repeat its success. Here's how to present your original movie as if it holds a full house of pre-established value, when in reality it holds absolute nothing. He could do it, so I gotta find a way to harness his power, and I think I found a way. That's right, we're gonna cheat. The first way Free Guy positions itself as a successful blockbuster is by taking elements from other popular properties and creating something new with them. So like I mentioned, this movie at its core is essentially an adaptation of Grand Theft Auto. We have an online game city full of routine following NPCs where players come in and commit crimes varying from completing specific missions to just generally acting like douchebags free of consequences. There's health packs, there's money dropped by the dead, there's levels and overpowered vehicles and player houses and garages and police stars. I mean, it is basically GTA Online on the big screen. Look at this guy. He's one of the sunglasses people. They get to do anything they want. They go on all sorts of missions, they got cool hair, cool clothes. We're band I mean, together laws aren't really laws to them. They're more like... a heist. But the important thing I want you to notice is that this movie doesn't just steal these elements from GTA and use them as is. And in order to better explain that, let's first look at a few cases where that is the case, because there's also tons of smaller easter eggs here from all kinds of different places. We have weapons like a portal gun, which is super cool because it's the portal gun from Portal. <laughs> We have your favorite real-life content creators like Jack Spadicey and Pokimane and Ninja, which is super cool because it's Ninja. You kid. You know, we even have straight up on the nose pandering stuff with all your favorite Emperor Mickey items and musical cues, which are super cool because.
All of this stuff is just a bunch of tiny as is references that offer nothing more than a few seconds worth of coolness. Which isn't unuseful, like most of the free guy chatter on Twitter for example was about the content creators and the Disney moments, because that's what younger audiences especially have been conditioned to enjoy. But all of it was added in later by others, none of it was in the original script, because as cool as references can be, you cannot build a movie on them. Nope. Firstly, because audiences don't need to go see a full movie to watch a few tiny clips they can just watch on Twitter. And secondly, because you can't just steal stuff you don't own. Like, imagine reading an original script that suddenly goes, and then the popular streamer Ninja shows up to say his catchphrase. You kid, you're adopted. And then the hero picks up Captain America's shield, and Chris Evans is like, what the hell? Like, you just laugh at that. Security! Kick this punk out. And the reason the GTA stuff is different is because instead of just throwing in a bunch of small references to it, the movie identifies the fundamental elements that make GTA what it is and repurposes them to create something new. It takes the idea of being an NPC in GTA Online and then delves deeper into who that person is, what kind of a journey he goes on. It takes the idea of a GTA Online world and then delves deeper into what that world is, how it came to be. It takes the core ideas of Grand Theft Auto and then build something with them that doesn't yet exist. I'm trying to say that things in this city don't have to be this way. Things can be different. It's kind of like how Michael Bay constantly utilizes the pre-existing value of real-life events and locations, but just with intellectual property. And it's very effective. Because not only does it allow you to convince the studio of your project's financial potential, it also allows you to offer audiences their favorite thing in a new way they haven't yet been able to experience. If you want to make a new kind of Batman movie, for example, then maybe make it about a bank robber who has to survive an overnight getaway as he's hunted not only by police but also by a scary masked vigilante known as the Owl. Where are you? And there you go, you've just generated pre-established value and potential out of nothing. Because everyone understands it's a Batman movie except, most importantly, the court of law. And if Free Guy isn't enough to convince you on this, here's one more other kind of example. There's an up-and-coming writer called Madsen Tomlin who wrote sort of a Tarantino-like not-Batman movie told from the perspectives of other characters. And guess which project he was hired to work on soon after. No, really, just guess. The second way Free Guy generates pre-established success from nothing is by telling a story that's very reminiscent of a story that has already been proven to succeed. See, the GTA building blocks aside, the actual story of this movie borrows from blocks that are a bit different. And if I explain the basics of the narrative, maybe you can figure it out. Our hero Guy is a drone caught in a loop who lives in a world where he and every other drone like him believes everything to be awesome. This is the greatest cup of coffee of all time. I want to write a song about it. I want to dance to that song. It's my body. I love my life. Until one day, he meets a badass outsider girl who makes him see that maybe everything isn't so awesome after all. The world isn't that bad though, is it? Oh, pretty bleak. Leading them to then go on a journey to fix that world before the effects of the world above destroy it for good. My secret weapon is called the power of the special. So yeah, the story of Free Guy very closely follows the story of the Lego movie, which again is a very useful approach because studio executives for example are pretty simple, and their thought process is basically gonna be this. This story like this story, this story make a money, this story must also make a money, here 100 million dollar. And before you laugh too hard, general audiences aren't much more three-dimensional either. They don't go see the smartest original movie in theaters. They go see the new Marvel movie. They go see Matrix 4. And I'm not saying I'm any different. Of course I'm gonna go see Matrix 4. Hell yeah, I'm gonna go see The Batman. What I'm saying is that audiences tend to enjoy watching what they have previously enjoyed watching, or at least carry some pre-existing familiarity with. Because once again, that's how modern Hollywood and media in general has conditioned us to think. I just thought I'd try something different today. <laughs> 
But the very important thing I also want you to notice is that Free Guy doesn't just redo the story of the Lego movie, Put that down. but instead identifies the most fundamental broad strokes of it and then breaks off to tell a story of its own. For example, for most of the runtime we believe Guy to be our main POV anchor into the narrative just like in the Lego movie. What I see are people inspired by each other. But at the same time, we also start to wonder why he's so obsessed with this real girl, Millie. Why he likes everything she likes. Why he's like the perfect last love she's been looking for. I kiss a non-toxic guy and like, of course, he's not even not even real! Until we eventually then realize that, oh, it's because Guy is just a computer creation. That the story is in fact actually anchored in Millie and her journey of learning through her experiences with Guy that what she's looking for is right there in the real world. If you would meet the, the girl of his dreams. So I had to base this girl off of someone and who better than the person that I was sitting next to every day? You. <laughs> And even though the Lego movie as well has a real world in addition to the Unreal one, it's not to the same extent. It's more about an emotional thematic connection than it is about actual interconnected plot lines where each world has tangible effects on the other. Good guy routine, it is a bad influence and it's bad for the franchise, I want him gone. The story of the Lego movie could function with just the Lego world, whereas the story of Free Guy needs both the computer and real world to function. Which is why there was no big outcry labeling Free Guy as just the lazy live-action remake. It managed to stand on its own because it did something of its own. Got your original build out there for everyone to see. Probably win your lawsuit, huh? Looks likely. And that's how you should approach it as well. Identify the key strokes that made a successful story successful and then use them as a foundation to build your own story on. In a way that your story can sell people on the familiarity but also has something to offer. The third lesson to take from Free Guy is that despite the usefulness of what we've talked about, you want to limit its use only to things you personally know and or love. Like both aspects we've discussed so far clearly came from minds that understood them. The GTA elements of being an NPC hero in a game world was the initial idea that the original gamer writer wanted to explore, whereas a big part of Millie's story came later in development from a more seasoned writer. Both of these elements and story turns were great because they were added in by people who are clearly Really passionate or at least knowledgeable about them. And to better showcase what I'm getting at, look at for example some of the more generic gaming stuff where that clearly wasn't the case. We have fictional gamer characters who are all either children or man children, which was a funny stereotype 10 years ago. God! You're 22 living in my house, there is no God! <laughs> We have game language that is not only ridiculously unnatural, he's got that place booby trapped to spawn points, but in some contexts also doesn't even make any sense. You've met God? His name's Antoine, and yes, he's an absolute troll. You stupid. I mean, we have the plot stuff of the game company here being bad because they want to make a sequel, which in the gaming landscape doesn't really hold water because there the bad company is actually the one that doesn't make a sequel and instead keeps milking the same game with microtransactions for a decade. Like, these aren't necessarily big problems the audience can't get over, and of course the culture does evolve faster than the movie gets made, but clearly all of this stuff was thrown in by some older people whose gaming knowledge comes exclusively from the articles they've read about them. And to see just how harmful this can get, take for example the addition of real content creators. What the inclusion of internet celebrities like Pokimane and Ninja does is that it informs the audience that this movie takes place in real life. Not some alternate reality where superheroes exist. No, the same current reality that you and I inhabit. Are you down? Which quickly becomes very confusing when the movie at the same time features other gaming things that aren't part of our reality. Like the whole world being so obsessed with this GTA-like game that its current in-game events are being featured on older people TV shows. Who is Blue Shirt Guy? You're absolutely right. As well as on mainstream media. PSG is leveling up and at a record pace by playing the hero. Whereas if you actually know something about gaming culture, then you know that GTA already exists and the general public isn't obsessed with it. You know that pretty much 
the only time mainstream media covers games to this extent is when they're either talking about money or making some politically motivated hit piece on why gaming is the source of all issues and not, you know, other things. Addictive, violent, and kids love it. Sucking productivity out of schools, out of war leads to aggressive behavior, bad relationships. By playing the hero. <laughs> And again, I'm not saying this is a massive problem Free Guy can't survive. I'm just saying that clearly the inclusion of real content creators was done by some older executive looking to milk their popularity among younger people without any clue of the consequences. Because honestly, seeing your favorite Twitch streamer talk about how uh, we need to stop hurting NPCs... Maybe you've been thinking about NPCs wrong this whole time. It is one of the dumbest things. Because because you know that's not something this person would ever actually say. We should all be more like Blue Shirt Guy. Maybe we just stop the killing. What the f did you say to me, you little s? <laughs> how, are you, how are you not in school? And to showcase the difference once more on the positive side, look at, for example, the character Dude, who's basically a better version of Guy created by the douchebag CEO of the game company. Catchphrase. Catchphrase? Well, I'm not trying to think one up yet. Although catchphrase as a catchphrase is a pretty cool catchphrase. Dude is one of the best characters in the film. Like he's really funny and fits the tone like a glove. And that's because he wasn't just thrown in because a goofy character like him worked in another movie. No, he was written in by Ryan Reynolds, who you might know is a master at this type of comedy. And it's that passion and knowledge that Ryan Reynolds personally carries towards this type of material that makes Dude work. Playtime's over. <laughs> and so the main thing I'm trying to get across here today is this. It's very useful to borrow pre-established elements and story ideas from other successful places, but only if they're places you personally know and care about exploring further. Because if you just go around grabbing stuff from every new popular thing just because it's popular, it is going to show. AKA Deadshot. But as one last thing, I'm actually teaming up with Twitch superstar Ninja myself to talk about a real issue that affects us all. Right, Ninja? You kid. And that issue is getting so overwhelmed by different subscription payments that you lose track of who's billing your credit card and for what. And being billed for a free trial because the customer service won't let you cancel in time. And not being able to have more than just one free trial. Way too fast, man. Can you guys do anything right? Well, Ninja and I are happy to say that this issue has been solved, thanks to privacy.com. It's a fully free browser and mobile app that allows you to create virtual cards for a credit card as a sort of VPN-like buffer to secure and control your money flow. You can organize and label all your different subscription payments to keep track of who is billing you and why. You can set spending limits or even block payments on specific cards so the vendor can only get the amount you allow. And you also make online transactions safer because you're not putting your actual credit card info out there. And yes, you can even have two trials of a streaming service instead of one by just creating two cards. But of course, don't go overboard. So for anyone in the US, who's paying money to too many places, head to privacy.com slash filmento or click the link below to sign up for a free account to fix the issue. And right now, you'll also get $5 to spend on your first purchase. Thanks, and thanks, Ninja. Thank you, kid. You're adopted.